Hi Beaders! So in response then to my last video where I did say that if you're interested in a coral stitch tutorial then I would put one up so this is what's coming up. So I just wanted to show you one that I'd made. This is a long one. This is approximately 6 inches, 7 inches long and um, really quite a floaty, flowy one and it's down to the thread that you use. So on this one I used 1G thread and it makes the coral very, very fluid and dangly really well. Um, I did a, a cone on the top, wire wrapped, make it all pretty, I did three um, crystal beads on the top, wire wrapped and then just simply added it onto a chain and um, put a parrot clasp on or a lobster clasp. So then I went on and made this smaller one and I think this is really cute and would make a really nice either a pendant or a pair of earrings. Now bearing in mind it is quite heavy so it's not something I'd imagine you'd want to wear all day um, but for a night out it would be very cool um, or like I say can be used as a pendant so this is what we're going to make today another one of these so let's get a product list together you will need to complete this tassel You'll need some seed beads of choice. Today, because I'm replicating this one, I'm going to be using the same colours. And what you do is you make a little bead soup. So I'm using a light, uh, these are Toho beads, a light purple, a really dark plummy purple, and a light crystal. And all you do is mix them together, make a little bit of a bead soup. You will also need... Now, if you haven't got, let me just bring you in a little bit to see these. If you haven't got closed jump rings, the next best thing is split rings. And that's what I used in my projects because I haven't got closed jump rings small enough. So I am using um, split rings. It's just so the thread doesn't uh, go through the hole. OK, but if you haven't got these either... I would recommend that you use jump rings and then put a spot of glue on the um, on the split. Close it really tight and then put a spot of glue over the split. That's another way of doing it. But for me today, I'm using jump uh, split rings. You also need a long head pin. Sorry, not head pin, eye pin or a piece of wire to make your own and for the top part of our coral tassel you will need some kind of bead cap or cord end so once that's gone in there that will be hidden in there and a bit of decoration for the top I am using um, a 4mm and a 6mm and a four mil and then they'll have a nice loop wrap loop at the top okay you will also need let me just widen you out a little bit some thread of your choice now for this project on this side i did use four pound fire line in crystal but smoke would you would work well too if you haven't got £4, £6 would be fine, or you could use 1G thread or KO thread. I'd keep away from Nymo for this project as it splits very, very easily. And because we will be travelling back through the beads to make our coral, you could pierce the thread and hence weaken it. So I would recommend a fire line, fire line for this one because we want it to be a bit fluffier. Okay, you will also need a beading needle. Now this is a size 10 beading needle, but a size 12 would work equally well if you haven't got a size 10. You would need 
a pair of scissors to cut your fire line. You will need some round nose pliers and some snipe nose pliers to make your loops. And you will need a pair of snips to cut either your eye pin or your wire, whichever you choose to do. Okay, so I'll leave you to get your goodies together and we'll be right back. Let's get started then. So all you need to do is measure yourself off about two arm spans of your thread or as much as you can manage. Run your thread through your um, hands just to warm it up and that works well for fire line and it also works well for wandy thread or any other thread of your choice. <clears throat> when I say arm spans, I mean stretch your arms out um, as far as they would go, nice and wide and measure a couple of them off. But there's a possibility that you will probably have to add more thread through the project, but we'll see. Okay then, so you've got your thread measured out and you have your weapon of choice. For me, it is the split ring. You could well have a, um, <coughs> excuse me, closed jump ring. So thread through a few inches of your thread through your jump ring. And all we're going to do is tie a few broad knots, making sure that the knots are nowhere near the uh, openings or where it overlaps. Okay, so that's one just to hold it in place. Now, surgeons. Try that again here. I've just put lotion on my hands so everything's sticking to my hands. I haven't had time to give myself a, a manicure because I've been out metal detecting. And we'll go again. Now remember, it doesn't matter how messy really it is up at the top because it will be hidden by your cord ending or your bead cap, whatever it is that you are using. Give it a darn good pull. And one final overhand knot over the top. And that should do us. Right, now you can wait until the end and put a dub of glue or um, nail polish on the knot or you can do it now. I'm going to just wait till the end. I'm just going to do another knot to be sure, to be sure. There we go. Okay. Right. Let's bring our beads into choice. Now I have made myself a little bit of a, a bead soup with the um, pale lilac and the um, crystal that has a bit of a purpley shimmer to it and I've also got myself some of the dark beads. Okay, to get started then, because I want to match this, okay, I know my length or my, let's call the, the branch down the centre the core. Let's call that the core. And then we'll call these little branches, either branches or coral, okay? So I know to match this that my long core needs to be approximately 35 beads. So just to get me started on this one, I will do uh, two, four, six. Knit 10. 
32, 24, 26, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, okay? But on yours, you decide how long you would like it to be, okay? So this is what we have, okay? So you're ready for the magic. All you do is pull one down, needle up through a few of your beads and pull your working thread through making sure that there's no loose thread to be seen. All we do is hold our bottom bead and pull and that sucks up all the loose thread. So to make our first branch or bit of coral, we need to put a few beads on, okay? Pull our thread down miss the bead, the last bead we put on, and needle our way through, back into the core and up a few beads, okay? Heading back towards our ring, holding the beads in place with our thumb and finger, pull the thread through, okay? And I'm getting my thread attached to all my tools at the side of me, so let's just move them out of the way. And please excuse Fudge having a bit of a groan and moan in the back. You can probably hear him moaning and groaning in the back because she's heard dogs on the field behind. Never right. Okay, so moving on then, a few beads onto our needle. The design is entirely up to you, how fluffy you would like it. But this time, I'm going to miss one, come up a few. For me, it's just before the dark one. Stop at any knots. Or they have a chance to get hold, pull our thread, and this time I'm going to add another bit of coral onto this one, another an extra branch. Just a small one. Pull our thread down. Miss one. back. Skip over where our last little branch was and up a few beads in our core. Okay. And pull the thread through. So we have this. Keep going then, pulling some beads up, to make another branch, skipping the last one, needling through our branch, making sure we don't skip any beads. and back into the core. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Picking a few beads up then. This time I'm going to make my branch look a bit bigger.
popping up a few beads. Keeping our word nice and tight, not pulling too tight that you make everything out of shape, but obviously it needs to be tight enough to um, make sure there's no loose thread. That's what I'm trying to say. Beads aren't behaving, they ain't gone the other way or that's better. Pull our beads through. <clears throat> Skip the last bead. Jumping over the last branch, but making sure that we catch every bead. And then going up some beads. We're getting closer to the uh, ring now. Okay, so we, we want it fluffy at the top, but not too fluffy that it um, pushes everything out. So if you look at this one, I've just done like single um, branches up near the top. So that's what I'm going to do now. Take a few off a minute. Put one of them on. No. That's it. Okay. First one nearly done then. So needling back through those, those beads and up through the last few beads closest to our ring. So what do we do now then? Right, okay. So now we need to position ourselves to, to start another call. So come through the loop top so you're going down the other side okay pick up a seed bead <clears throat> go back through the loop okay so we picked up a seed bead we're going back through the loop Holding everything in position, it is a wee bit fiddly, and then come back down that C bead. <clears throat> and there we are, ha, there we are, positioned, ready for, oh, sorry for our next lot of core beads. So I've come out of the top, we we'll should go it again in a minute, but we've come out the top of our last core bead, gone through the loop at the top, picked up a C bead, gone back through the loop and then come down the C bead. So we're now in position to pick up some more C, be some more C beads for our core. And now I don't have to count them because I've got our length here and I know that when I lay it next to it, it needs to be round about the same. Hope you're having fantastic weather where you are. Here in Cornwall, we've had some amazing weather and then I don't know if those of you follow me on and on my detecting adventures, metal detecting adventures, we'll know that I did the uh, big weekender last weekend and it was a complete and utter nightmare. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it, I had pigs sleeping in the farm next to me and woke me up at stupid hours of the morning, but I didn't realise it was pigs at the time. I thought there was animals outside my tent <laughs> and I thought it was in the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> but it blew a hooly. We had up to 50 mile an hour winds. Are you having that 50 mile an hour winds? 
anyway so skip one come back up through as many as you like okay holding our thread and our beads having a look making sure there's no spare thread just by holding the bottom bead and pulling up the thread few beads on. Okay, miss one. Come up. Come up a few beads. Pulling our thread through. Okay, so again, pick up a few beads. A seed bead. This time I'm going to do a, another branch of it, I think, just to make it nice and fluffy. So, skipping a bead. Come up a few beads. Pulling our last bead tight, keeping the tension nice. Pushing some of them, she says, pushing some of them beads on. Dropping them beads down and I've got a knot in my thread. There we are, simply. Run your fingers over it. Just warm it up. Miss one. This time going back all through, skipping over the branch, picking all those beads up. And then if you can do it all in one go, carry on. If you can't, don't worry about it. Going back up the core beads. And we're ready to add another branch. Look what I've got in there. No, it's not a crisp, I'm on a diet, it's a bit of paper. A bit of paper. I've, uh, I'm two and a half pounds off losing two stone. Following uh, food optimising with Slimming World. And I feel so much better for it. <laughs> yeah, two and a half pounds off two stone. Okay, so missing one. Going up a few, however many you want. There's no set rules to this. It won't look odd or indifferent. You don't have to do lots of branches off like this. You can just do one coral off each core. And it'll look just as nice. So needling through. And up. Holding our beads firmly with our finger and thumb. Okay. Putting on another branch. I would say for the project guys, in, in case you're wondering, give yourself, you want at least, well I say at least, 10 grams is absolutely enough to make you this tassel and pro uh, two tassels and probably another one. Um, just make sure you've got enough um, beads, but 7 grams and more I would say. Um, I haven't weighed them out to, to give that as, as an, an exact amount, but to, say, make a full set, like if you were going to make these into earrings, earrings at this size, I mean, you don't have to be, you can cut them down however size you want, but to make a um, pair of earrings, say, and a pendant, I would 
at say about 10 grams would be my guesstimate and that's what it is I don't want to be shot down if anybody has measured uh, weighed and know how many eggs you know to be exact then please do leave a comment but I haven't I haven't weighed at all to see and I've got myself a knot now because I wasn't concentrating there we are simply enough to pull up that one was okay so skipping making sure I go through all the beads and we're going to have one more tassel at the top here so I can get my needle through there we go just at the top pull my threads tight and we're back up to the top so going through the top seed bead then where we started holding our work making sure that other tassels are out of the way and we're back to the top okay so going through the top ring picking up a seed bead holding it pulling it down go back through the ring and then back down through the seed bead and that puts you in position for the next one okay nice and easy it just keeps everything nice so off we go again then and we're going to put three sorry not three at all because I'm looking at three I'm doing a, I'm doing on my third one all the time what's maybe say three we're going to put four cores with coral on each ring okay you can go up to five but that would be a maximum I wouldn't go any more than five but for this it's just four I've got two inside two rings inside each with four on Ample. Miss one then. Go up a few. Pull our work tight. So when do you guys do your beading then? Do you do it in the day? Do you do it in the evenings? Only when you've got a spare. A couple of hours. When do you like to do your beading? I tend to do mine um, quite a lot in the day. In the evenings I like to crochet sometimes. I'm just a grandson and I've been making blankets. Well, he's had them now. I was making blankets. And I've got myself a bit of a weird knot going on here. If we can find out where it's come from, mm -hmm. strange, isn't it? I'll just sort this out guys then come back to you 
I just hadn't pulled me thread. <laughs> hadn't pulled me all my thread through. <laughs> that was all. It was nothing. Oh, idiot. So, yeah. When do you like to do your beading? Is it when a hubby's gone out or your partner's gone out or a weekend thing? Sometimes I like to bead in front of the TV as well. It's quite therapeutic and when while you're while I'm doing this, I'm not thinking about food. <laughs> Funny, aren't we? What other hobbies do you like to do, guys? Do you like to bead, knit, crochet, embroidery? My other thing is wire wrapping. I like doing um, sea glass wire wrapping. It all goes on down the garage. The half built me a um, little workroom in the garage, so I do all my drilling and quite a bit of the white work out there. I still do a bit of white work in here. Just don't tell him. <laughs> Back up. Few beads holding the work. Do you keep an eye as well of when you're going when you first start it? You, you do, or you can get your um, tail wrapped round your things. I did it and I ended up chucking the project across the room because I got infuriated with it. Oh, that was funny. Take a breather and start again. Oh dear. Keeps us entertained, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to do another little branch off. The design, it this design opens up to, gosh, I like the word plethora or cornucopia of ideas. The amount of different things you can do from this one stitch is just amazing. You could put little berry beads on as your end bead. So what I mean by your end bead, this one here, this is the end bead, isn't it? So instead of putting a seed bead on, you could put a little berry bead, a little drop bead, a little dragon scale bead, and it'd give the whole necklace a complete different look. So travel on the branch. Okay. Up into our core. Oh, see, this is what happens. Come to the top and putting on our final piece of coral or our final branch. Missing the last one through our little up the last two beads to the top back to our split ring or jump ring whichever it is you're using mm. it looped itself around that's a new one it off a little bit. Put the naughty thread where it belongs down there. That's it. And back to the top. Okay, can you remember? Because we're on the last one now. We'll start the last one. So through the loop. 
pick up a bead, bring the bead to your loop, pass the needle through the back of the loop, keeping control of everything and then turn around the bead. Do it this way then and back down the bead. Puts us in position for our last piece of coral. And I do believe they're all scooted round. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Back up there and then I'll glue you to this one. Okay. So I'm just going to have to have a little drink guys. I'm just gone as dry as anything. Sorry. No, it's not gin. It's um, soda water and juice. <laughs> Imagine doing a tutorial. <laughs> when you're a bit sozzled, I'll wash your beads or your needles. <laughs> oh, dear. Some people don't like my humour. Well... Life's too serious, isn't it? I'm one who believes life is too serious and I like to give fun tutorials and if by fun it means me being a bit daft then so be it, is what I say. There we are, so that's enough to run our last one then. Skip a bead, come up through a few on our core and making a few sorry guys I'm stifling a little ouch <laughs> that'll teach me to have soda water so missing the beads coming through Back up into the core, coming up into a few. A few beads. Ooh, you're on your last leg now. For your first one. Just make it a bit fluffier here at the bottom. Darn it. That's me getting excited. Got my eyes on, why can't I see it? There you go. By what I mean by my eyes on, I've got my glasses on. Okay. Bit of a I did like a branch. And up through a few cores. Continuing on then. Didn't get any on there. 
H okay. down this up through here bring out an extra branch remember you can just do single branches if you want to don't have to do branches off. If you can't get them all in one go, don't worry about it. Go through as many as you can. Grab on to the branch underneath. <laughs> Maybe not. Eh? And the last one for this one. Will be just a long branch. A long piece of coral, whichever word you'd like to use. Up into the final bead at the top. Yay! It's your first set of four. Are you thinking so? How? Oh, okay, so I've made that. So how do I? Tie it off. Okay, simple. So you go through your beads at the top, your sorry, your um ring at the top, come down the bead you just exited at the top. And through a couple and we're going to tie off some half hitch knots so here we are then on this piece of coral we've come through them beads there we're just going to put our needle catch a thread pull up a little loop put our needle through the loop dropping it it's essential and pull and there's a half inch knot so I'm just going to go down a few beads in the core you can go down a branch if you want to pick up a thread needle through the loop pull the loop and it's a half inch knot Go down a few beads, pick up the loop, put everything out the way. I haven't caught the thread there. I have now. Moving them out the way. Needle through the loop, pull, 
and another half inch knot. Okay then, go through a few beads. Pull the thread down. Through a thread. Through the knot. Oh, that's completely. That hasn't just gone. I thought I'd completely missed it then. Through a few beads. thread through the loop pull the loop down that gives you a half inch knot one more and then you can give yourselves a pat on the back come down here <laughs> pull up the thread Through the loop, pull the knot down, and then come out the next two beads. Cut your thread close to I oh, did forget to say in the you will need a lighter or a um, oh, what they called them burn you down tools. I can't think what they called. I have got one, but it's not in front of me, so I can't tell you what it's called. So I like a lighter. So get your lighter and just put your thread into the flame, and it will cause it to ball, and that's it. Safe as houses. Come back up to here, the other end, cut off some of the thread, again, Causes it to ball and down it goes. Now you can decide whether you're going to add a touch of glue or not. I like to add a touch of glue and my glue of choice is the Hypo Cement for this because it has a wonderfully fine tip nozzle and you can get the lid off. Here it comes, a wonderfully fine tip nozzle that you can get right in and uh, give it a bit of a gluing. There we are. Leave that to dry. So, the good news is, you have finished your first one. The even gooder news is, you need to make another. Exactly the same as what you've just made here. If you're unsure, just um, stop the video now and go back and do the next one with me again. If you feel that you're capable of carrying on and going ahead and making... The next one on your own by all means go ahead and do that oh excuse me <laughs> once you've done that how rude once you've done that um come back and we'll put all our bits together and turn a loop together how about that 
Okay then guys, so I will catch you very shortly. Have fun, keep on beading. Give yourselves a pat on the back then. You've obviously got your two bits together now. Now we're going to put them together. So you will need for this your eye pin, your bead cap or cord ending, your little selection of beads, your pliers and your round nose pliers and a cutting tool. Okay, so first thing to do then is if you're using wire, you will need to first of all make your loop at the bottom. So if you were making your loop at the bottom, you will just turn a loop, okay, and open your loop and feed them on, okay. But if we're using an eye pin, then we need to open the eye pin, feed on our wonderful, beautiful coral stitch tassels and then close the loop. Okay. So this is what we have. Next then, simple, we feed. <laughs> the eye pin into our cord end bead cap and then it's just a of putting on your selection of beads now you don't have to use crystals you can use pearls whatever it is that you happen to have that finishes off your beautiful coral tassel for me I'm using these I can't even see the hole I have got my eyes on still. What on earth? There. Okay, so now we are going to attempt to do a loop, wrap a loop at the top of our work. Okay, so grabbing our pliers, making sure that everything's sitting nice and tight and as it should be. Just give the eye pin a bend to 90 degrees okay swapping over then to our round nose pliers placing them at the top push over the wire to point up and then all the way over till flat and pass the beads on the other side so it looks like that Okay. Turning our pliers up to the top and push the wire round to the back. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either hold your eye pin like that, in which I think I might do it this time like that. And I like to have it at the top. Now I'm going to do it mine like this. So I'm holding in my left hand now, my less dominant hand. So if you're right hand, left-handed, then swap over to your right hand and use your dominant hand to pull and wrap the wire. Okay. So we're going to, oh, not do that. We're going to wrap the wire behind the beads, pulling it forward. all the way around we need a helping hand quite strong eye pins these are I'm doing my best to show you we want the wire to do two loops so I'm just going to give it a helping hand that should do us and there's a little and there that I just want to snip off 
with my pliers. It's just pinned. Okay, and then just squash. Straighten up my eye pin and just squash that end in because we don't want it catching on anything. Okay, and there you have. And you can go in with your pliers and just straighten up your loop. And there you have your finished article. Your finished beautiful piece of jewellery. Now you can either go ahead and make another one, you can make long ones. Please do experiment and see what you come up with. Personally, I just love the, I'm, I'm tassel mad there at the end of the day, I love tassels. If I don't know what I'm going to make, I either make wrap, wrap, well, wrap bracelets or tassels. That's what I tend to do. I do love a coral tassel and it's just so, look at that, gorgeous, like a piece of coral in the sea. Beautiful, waving around in the sea. Could even look like some of that seaweed stuff, couldn't it? That's, no, coral sounds much better than seaweed. <laughs> right then, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, this little tutorial. Um, just welcome everybody and any new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. Yes, I am a little bit um, mad. I don't take life too seriously and I do show you my bloopers as they go along. If I cock up along the way, then I cock up along the way. It's one of those things and I think it's far more fun. Life's too serious as it is at the moment. So if I can add and make you smile while you're beading, then so be it. Um, so yeah, so anybody new who just happened to come across this video, and you'd like to subscribe and follow me on my madcap journey then please do hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell underneath that will notify you of any new up and coming tutorials i also do do metal detecting videos so you don't have to watch those if you're not interested um totally understand that so that's not a problem but please do give me a thumbs up if you'd like to and do drop me a comment i love to hear your thoughts i know i'm not perfect but hey I'm enjoying myself and I hope you're enjoying it too. So I hope to see you on the next video then guys. Take care now and very happy beading. Mwah. Hmm.